I want to move in the Spirit outside of my own private relationship with the Spirit. And I want to move in the Spirit more than just deliver powerful gospel music and powerful gospel messages. I want to move in the Spirit hands-on in the filling of the Spirit, the baptism in the Spirit, the healings, the miracles, the prophecies, the deliverance, meaning delivering people out of the bondage they're in. It's a reference to Exodus. That delivering people either who are possessed or oppressed or just have bondage in their life, stuff that they haven't worked through with God, whatever you want to call it. But I want to be hands-on. I want to be hands-on. Because if one of us does it, maybe two of us will do it. And maybe four of us will do it if two of us are doing it. Maybe that's a grassroots movement to start acting like a Christian. Forgive me, but that's terrible that there would be a grassroots movement to do what Christians were doing all over the place 30 years ago. When I first became a Christian, it was like the spirit-filled Christians were everywhere and they were speaking in tongues in public and they were praying for people in public and they were laying hands on people in public. You know, and then uh, their problems set in and then their jobs got hard and then their marriages got hard. Life happened. And people just petered out. They want to live quiet lives. And they're using scripture for that because it said live a quiet life. Meaning not to piss off your neighbors, not to not move in the spirit, by the way. You can live a quiet life and still be really noisy in the spirit. My dog just said amen. I love that. Okay, one, once was cute. Are you doing the dog? Oh, that's so nice. He's trapped in the corner. So all of a sudden you hear the sounds of Ace bashing through the gate and him and, and, and Jeff screaming and the sound of gurgle, gurgling and then it gets really quiet. Oh, they're both quiet now. Okay. It was nice knowing him for as long as you have, right? So, in conclusion, I would say, now what do I do? See, now we've trained the dog to know that more than one person will come out and play with him. <laughs> this is got, just put him in here in a cage written all over it. That'd be funny. Um, I'll repeat, in conclusion, I would say, now what do I do? So here's what I want to say. I am really grateful for the kitchen. I'm really happy with the kitchen. And I'm really grateful for the food stuff. I think that was uh, a really neat move of God and I think it creates a family environment, a faith community environment. And I don't want to do anything to inhibit the fellowship after my events. But I also don't want my concern of inhibiting the fellowship after the events to limit what the Holy Spirit can do in these walls. So, I'm going to say something for the sake of TV land, and then we're going to turn that baby off. So I'm going to say this. I have said it before, but I want to make sure it ends up here. And I am available to pray for people about anything. And we don't have to be in the exact same room or even in the same state or country for me to be convinced that the Holy Spirit can move mightily through me just because I'm willing to be there to allow that to happen. But I am willing to pray with anyone about anything at any time 
unless I think it's annoying and stupid and then forget what I just said. But generally speaking, if you're being plagued by Satan and it, or if you're troubled in your body or someone close to you is suffering, I would hope that people here and people in TV land would put me at the top of their list of people to contact. I'm really easy to find online, eventually. <laughs> Not tonight, my website's down, but until it all gets fixed, I'm really easy to find online, but you really can find me online somewhere, even now. And write me, and I'll call you, and I will pray with you anytime, and uh, expect nothing in return except a praise report when God moves. Now you can turn that off. Now, for the rest of